Hey, what's up photographers? In this video, we're going to take a look at Capture One's new update with the iris and pupil masking. They do have other updates available that was just recently released in December this month. I'll put a link to that in the description. But anyways, my favorite update is this masking tool and I wanted to do a short editing tutorial on a portrait or with the eyes. So let's get started. This photo in front of me, I'm going to go and mask the pupils or the iris right here. So I'm going to go to the people masking tool right here, click on it. And you can see here it says pupil and iris. Before it was just eyes or it said eyes and it would select the white part of the eyes as well. But now it'll just select the pupil and the iris. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to click on create mask. And now you don't see the mask yet, so I'll press the keyboard shortcut M to show the mask. So I'm going to zoom in here. It did a decent job with the mask, but you can see it missed a few spots here and here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the masking tool. And I'm going to paint in the missing parts. I'm just going to right click on the image to open up the brush settings and I'll put the hardness to about 90 and that looks good and I'll just paint this in and I'll just paint this in that looks good and I'll paint this in you can see the feather on the mask is a little bit different so I should have reduced the hardness but that's fine okay so that looks good it looks a lot better so the iris and pupil masking, it's not perfect. Sometimes you do need to help it, but it does make things a little bit quicker with the masking. So I'm just going to zoom out here. I'm going to go to the selection tool. And now I'm going to adjust the color on the eyes. So I will go to the color editor. It's already open here. Let me close this. And I'll go to the advanced tool. Click on the eyedropper or the color selector tool and so I'm going to select the blue or turquoise area right here and it made a pretty good selection now I'll just increase the saturation a bit so now you can see the before and after here's the before and after okay and I'll go back to the select tool and I'm going to add a little bit of clarity and I'm going to add a little bit of I'm going to add a little bit of structure. So I'm going to increase the clarity. I'm going to increase the structure. You may not notice the difference. So I'm going to option or alt click on this reset button to show you the before and after. Here's the before and after. So it did make a big difference or improve the eyes. One thing you can see is the uh, iris flare. I don't think Capture One has a automatic tool to remove that. So you would need to do that with some advanced masking and uh, healing. But I hope to see that in a future uh, update. So anyways, the eyes look a lot better now. And one thing I can do is now do some uh, selective color. So going back to this pupil and iris mask, I'm going to duplicate it. And I'll just name this black and white. I'm going to invert it. I'm going to invert the mask. So I'll press the keyboard shortcut M to show you where it's selecting. So that looks good. And now I'm going to decrease the saturation. I'll go to the exposure, decrease the saturation, add a little bit of contrast. I'm going to reduce the highlights actually too. So you just got to play around with these sliders a little bit to get a decent color balance or a grayscale balance I should say and I'm going to go to the curve tool because I want to reduce the highlights here so it's on the RGB curve and I'll just reduce it a little bit and that looks good so I'll show you the before and this is the after before and after so what do you guys think of this iris and pupil masking tool do you think it's helpful it's just a slight change to the previous eye masking 
So make sure to leave your comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. And as always, live easy, sleep breezy, and stay lovely.